basically every X-Men fan's worst nightmare is happening before our very eyes. Jim from Weird Science, you're not exactly a lifelong X-Men fan, but you've been subjecting yourself to the Krakoan era. Do you yeah. think this is going to get better? No. And and my thing is, is jumping on to Marvel. I'm more of a DC guy. So jumping on to Marvel, obviously, one of the big things I wanted to get into were the X-Men. And I liked the Krakoa stuff at the beginning, but then I started too many side writers, a teeny Howard, things like that. And I started losing interest, kind of got back into it for the end. But once these announcements come, I needed something to get me excited to really jump in and hasn't been that i mean these these announcements just make it seem like more of the same of what we got before and that that's that's not good exactly we've got more details regarding phoenix and nyx and these creators are the stuff of nightmare this is the stuff you didn't want to follow tom revort from the avengers office it's happening this july the from the ashes air begins but as the x-men regroup across the globe xavier's first student will ascend to the cosmos to fulfill her divine destiny Behold the adventures of the universe's newest savior in Phoenix, an ongoing Jean Grey solo series from hotshot Marvel writer Stephanie Phillips. Hotshot. Hot That's shot. one way to describe her. These seem like the announcements that you would get when the, the big writers have moved on and you get these replacement writers that aren't as good. But these are the big names. These are the things that they, you know, Tom Brevoort seems to want to go grab, even though. You know, there's big rumors that a lot of people turned it down and you kind of get that each one of these announcements has been less and less. And that's not the excitement factor that you need going into it. I don't personally know Stephanie Phillips, but I've read a lot of Stephanie Phillips comic books. I can't believe how much work she's gotten at Marvel and DC. And she hasn't had a hit book yet. She's mm -hmm. had a handful of, of OK, decent comic books. I would say her first issue of Harley Quinn and Future State was actually really damn good. I would say mm -hmm. that's like a four, four and a half star comic book. You know, Cap Wolf and the Howling Commandos, that series is fine, but it's really just Captain America as a, a werewolf. It's, it's not exactly hard pleasure. stuff here. Yeah. But yeah. every other ongoing series, like her Carly Quinn, like ended up dipping out of the top 100. You don't see that with Harley Quinn. She has had so much failure at Marvel and DC, but continues to get these opportunities. You would have thought that Tom Brevoort would have realized during Cosmic Ghost Rider. That's the one, yeah. Which yeah. is somewhat similar to Phoenix. Obviously different, but you know, it is going to be a cosmic story in space and all that stuff. And she fucking dropped the ball there too. Oh, she dropped it big time. And I have like a kind of a personal little beef going with her. Uh, she ended up attacking our site and Gabe, but I don't mind, you know, Gabe sus. But the idea that I still give her a chance, though. I, I don't have a vendetta. I still give her a chance. And every time I'm burned, I did like the Cap Wolf deal. But like you said, that Cosmic Ghost Rider, it, it just was beyond bad. It, it was just boring. And when you talk to people about Stephanie Phillips, especially when this came out, I said to them, like, oh, well, you know, she didn't do a good Wonder Woman book. And people don't even remember her doing a Wonder Woman. Like, that's how kind of lame it is and i don't know it just ends up where people didn't seem to be that excited right away about a phoenix book and then when you attach stephanie phillips they're just like well that seems like they're not even trying and yeah that the hype level is not there because you are you know dealing with the fact that you're coming out of the krakoa era where a lot of people by the end just bailed so you need something to get people to know that you mean that you're going to do something better. You're not going to end up. But this feels like mid Krakoa era, like right away at the start. At least you had Hawks and Pox with the Krakoa and you had Hickman going. And, but, you know, when it started to fade, it was because of writers like this on books. Somehow, Stephanie Phillips being on Phoenix was the good news that we got after Jeff Thorne on X Force. With Xavier's school long gone and Krakoa destroyed, the greatest city on Earth is about to get a huge influx of mutants. Whether they're welcome there or not, see a group of former X-Men students navigate young adulthood, discrimination, and threats bent on shattering human-mutant relations for good in NYX. A new ongoing series from hotshot writing duo Colin Kelly Hot and James with Jackson Lanzig. Colin Kelly and Jackson Lanzig, another pair of writers, like, they haven't had a hit series. They're Captain America ongoing was canceled faster than any other Captain America ongoing yeah. in the history of comic books. <laughs> like, that's saying something. I think they jumped onto Bloodshot as replacement writers and lasted two issues before they were fired. Yep. Everything they touch gets canceled almost immediately. NYX was going to be a hard sell no matter who oh, you yeah. put on the book as far as the writer or the character. I don't think Wolverine could, could carry an NYX book. It was always going to be tough, but putting these guys on it is the death sentence it's, for the book right is. out the gate. And you're reading it from the 
actual press release. And when you read these press releases and you, you go and you try to figure out, OK, what's the angle here? And when they do say hot shot writing duo, Colin Kelly and Jackson Lansing, guys who were on Captain America and Guardians of the Galaxy. Those are two big books. They don't mention those in the press release. They say timeless, which they filled in for Jed McKay and alien black, white and blood. Th those are the things they're like trying to short think. anthology story. Yeah, it shows you that. You know, Marvel realizes that they aren't that good. I mean, if you're doing a Cap book or you're doing a Guardians of the Galaxy book, these should be marquee titles that you brag to people about them being on. They're not good. And if people end up thinking, oh, my God, you know, Jim and, and Wes, you're, you're full of it. They're great. Tell me what their style of writing is. Tell me what you think, because they don't have one. They are generic writers who end up trying to grab on to what they think is the oh, this is the best you know version. And they they ape it, but they don't have the chops to do it. They try to be other people on every book that they do. And it always fails. And then you have a book that most people are just going to kind of, you know, shrug their shoulders. Well, that's an odd choice for the beginning of this. But what are they going to do with it? They are boring writers doing a book that's like really dark and, and things. I It's like you said, hard sell immediately. This needs to be a writer who has their own fan base that will, you know, keep the book going while, you know, other people may get word of mouth. And there's not going to be any word of mouth. This is going to end quicker than the Stephanie Phillips Phoenix book. And it has, I don't see it lasting at all. I mean, there's no way. I mean, currently they're trying to be Warren Ellis over at DC Comics yep. with their Outsider series, trying to recreate Planetary with like fucking Batwoman and, and Jace Fox or whatever. Yeah, yeah. And guess what? Or I think it's Luke Fox, actually. But yeah, guess Luke what? Fox. That one's floundering and was outside, I think, the top 200 on the third issue. Yeah. That, that's going to be announced. Pretty soon we'll find out that that is uh, canceled because, that again, there's where you go. You have them doing an Outsiders book that is a kind of a planetary – that's a hard sell. You know, that's especially without, say, Warren Ellis writing it. So they go in and it, it, they're doing nothing. Everybody's just like, well, this is nothing, and they forget about it. That's what they do. They end up on a book, and people just – Forget about it. I don't get why you have to have two people to be this awful. Like you could just have one guy. Or like, and the idea where they talk about, oh, they're probably hired because they're cheap. I mean, there's two guys. Like they're really. I, I don't get them. I don't get it. They've been around for a while. Never really did anything, and then suddenly got elevated to the point where they're on so many books, and it, it'll fade. I mean, again, it all goes with sales and almost everything that they do, including huge characters fall out of the top two hundred. The big problem with this entire relaunch is Tom Revort, I guess his Rolodex just shrunk. Yeah. We're just getting all the writers that were failing on Avengers and he's moving them over to X-Men plus Gail Simone. Yeah. Like Gail Simone hasn't been a big time successful writer in over a decade at this point. Jed McKay, he might be the best of what they have left, but he's just an average writer. And now we're getting into you're, you're far less than average writers. You're just downright yeah. bad writers. And he brought over all the stuff that was failing on Avengers and brought it into X-Men. This was never going to be the recipe for success. But maybe Tom Brevoort on X-Men was never going to be a recipe for success. It's true. And I, I think you're right with the Rolodex deal. I think that what he has is a very limited Rolodex of just those people that he worked with. And, you know, you're not going to grab Jason Aaron to come here, uh, do that. But maybe that'll eventually happen. But the, the thing that gets me is where... It's almost like the okay, the Phoenix book. We we would have had Teeny Howard do it seven months ago, but she's doing other things. So who's the oh Stephanie Phillips? That's their Teeny Howard replacement. You end up like well, and Celeste Bronfman. Like. I'm assuming she's going to be on another book as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you end up where I'm just saying in general the idea of it doesn't feel like this is anything of an upgrade from anything that we got from before. It really doesn't. And uh, yeah, I think that. Tom Brevoort needs to maybe get some other things, do some recruiting, yeah. maybe look elsewhere, because if you're looking just in-house for your hot shots, you don't have any right now. No, it's, it's just a, a, an insane shell game that Tom Brevoort and, and Dan Buckley and all these people are playing. But once you actually discover what's underneath, it's just, you know, an F you. It's a middle finger. We yeah. do have some details for Phoenix and NYX. Uh, for Phoenix, she is Jean Grey. She is Phoenix. She saves the world. She brings death. One woman alone in space who not only must do what no one else can, she yearns to a desperate SOS from Nova brings Phoenix to the edge of a black hole where hundreds of lives hang in the balance and whatever Jean does or fails to do 
will bring darkness to the universe and haunt her in ways she can scarcely imagine. Like, I'm so done with <laughs> this Phoenix in general, but Jean yeah. Grey as Phoenix, it was a great story. It's one of the greatest X-Men mm-hmm. stories of all yeah. time. And obviously, Jean Grey was very important to that. She's not Phoenix. Phoenix is a separate entity. Phoenix, I think, is supposed to be Echo right now, but they just keep passing this little power set around yeah. to people, thinking that it's a big deal. At this point, the Phoenix has played out. You know, with her being alone in space with Nova, that's not a cell. No, that's not. Um, you're reading that, and when you read that from what would be a solicit, I kind of got bored. I mean, you're sitting there thinking of the story of like, okay, Phoenix, like you said, the funny thing is, it's supposed to be Echo when they, they ended up having that wacky contest deal, but everybody, nobody dealt with that. But you're ending up in space, Nova, black hole. I don't know. That doesn't seem very uh, intriguing to me. It doesn't seem like a must read. And like you said before, Stephanie Phillips, the one book that you can kind of guess, okay, that's kind of, it's cosmic. So cosmic ghostwriter. And that was boring. That book was so boring. And uh, I don't get it. I I don't get why they'd even have her in space. It just doesn't make sense. And everybody I talk to, they're like, this this doesn't seem like anything I'd want. Well, but she's got a new, new, new costume. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) I love that they talk about, like, why does she have a new costume? And like, eh, I think I know why. Very cover sales. That, that's it. That's why they have it. That even shows you right there that they're, yeah, we, we don't know that this will sell. Maybe we can give her a crimping that. iron next and she can crimp her hair on awesome. the freaking cover. <laughs> like, great. Whoa, she's got wavy hair now. You could have I gotta buy this book. It'd be great. You'd have that, have it like a, you know, uh, go for it. At the end, have it where you can fold it like the old, like, Mad Magazine and, and do crazy, wacky stuff like that. Just throw it all out there uh, because I don't think this book is going to be very exciting or last very long. If they make it past six issues on Phoenix, I'll be flabbergasted. <laughs> all right. As far as the other book, NYX is about mutants living past the end of their world and into a new beginning. This is Miss Marvel embracing her mutant life in the neon streets of the Lower East Side. This is Enola trying to keep his head above water. This is Wolverine in the shadows of Bushwick protecting her own. This is Prodigy writing history as it happens and Sophie Cuckoo fighting her own way. The news reports are bleak. The streets feel dangerous. There's something lurking underground. Evil coming from every direction, but they're determined to make it. This is mutant community. (laughs) This is mutant pride. This is NYX. This is garbage. Oh, God. It's so bad. The... I, I give Lansing and Kelly, they're doing the quotes in this press release, trying to get people like excited. But even the idea where this is the book that we wanted to come to Marvel to create, really, like, stop it. There, nobody came to anywhere to create this book with this team. And every step in those uh, Miss Marvel people, you know, you have uh, Laura, all that stuff going on. People just are rolling their eyes at this. You, you have Lansing and Kelly. We talked about it. They're, they're not that exciting. I don't think they have a fan base you need to put them on a book that has some big characters has some things that you might want to check out despite them writing them this just doesn't have anything i mean just the explanation of it and they're claiming oh we're going to get real dark with this and all that well miss marvel's on it they're not going to go dark with it there's no way and their version of dark will probably be just laughable anyway yeah yeah that'll be it that'll be their problem so this appears to be ostensibly a book about mutant prejudice mm-hmm. right yeah people being prejudiced against mutants well that isn't the best uh, utilization of x23 in the history of the world but they have to throw x23 next to miss marvel in hopes of actually selling the character as a mutant no one yeah. cares about miss marvel as a mutant this mm-hmm. comic book series has no cachet with people no one gives a flying fuck about nyx no no if they didn't want to call it new mutants if they didn't want to call it you know uh whatever they should have just called this one gen x at least yeah. there's a little bit of name cachet with that. But even then, with the writers on it and what you're being told about what the book's going to be about and the fucking lineup, it is the trifecta of fucking death. There's nothing yeah. here uh, to get people excited about anything. This book will be very, very lucky to make it past four issues. Yeah, yeah, it will be. And like you said, it's about that whole you know prejudice deal. I only think that you're going to have Laura walking down the street and they're going to be like, you ain't no Wolverine, you chick. Like, that'll be it. It's going to devolve into just nonsense. 
right away. I, I can't see how this is the team or the book or the writers to do this book, but it's something that nobody would really even want. I mean, the idea of this book is about, you know, pride in the mutant community. They're going to go so over the top. They're so heavy handed. They have no subtlety that who, who knows who they'll try to write like on this one, but it'll probably be some nonsense. And it'll just like I said, you're right. It'll just end because it, it's just going to be a joke. I I, <laughs> I, I want to look forward to these. This one especially. This is like right out the oh, door. Oh, we're right going to have to review this one. Yeah, this yeah. well, in, in our show, we'll, we'll definitely be going. You and Doc will be going through it. Like, it will be like a standard given book each time. I guarantee it, it'll be that bad because they've done nothing to tell me that they won't do that bad. And then the description of it makes it even worse. It really is it, it's heavy handed and nonsense, but if we'll the see. the opening salvo regarding <laughs> X-Men from the ashes was underwhelming and I was very underwhelmed by that. Uh, I don't, this, the second round of information or details regarding this X-Men reboot. I don't know that there's a word to describe how I'm feeling about it. You know, apathetic doesn't really quite get there. Mm. It, it's, it's, there's nothing here. There's nothing exciting. This is the most dead on arrival X-Men reboot in the history of X-Men reboots, and X-Men has gone through some hard times lately. Yeah. And I do not think this is going to do anything for the reputation of X-Men mm. within you know, the comic book mm. sphere. It's not getting better. It's actually getting worse. These pitches are fucking stupid. Putting yeah. Jeff Thor on X-Force is a bad idea. Putting yeah. Stephanie Phillips on Phoenix is a bad idea. Bringing NYX back is a bad idea. Putting Colin Kelly and Jackson Lansing on it is a fucking worse idea it's worse. and they are embracing all the shitty ideas that they can come up with and they're running with it bad and i guess we're gonna be here uh for the for the giggles yeah and, and, we ain't gonna and be the here giggles the and when you when you go with it and people may say and if they're gonna say anything it's like hey guys you gotta wait till they come out maybe the no, maybe they'll be lightning in a bottle the problem is you need the lightning now because people are going to decide already. Plus, you're coming out of something that a lot of people ended up hating. And you need this to seem fresh. You need it to seem new. But you need it to seem like something that you want to jump back into the X-Men after being upset. Before This isn't it. This ends up making it like, oh, you didn't like Krakoa. Well, you know, hold my whatever because here we go. Uh, like this makes it seem like, oh my God, can we go back to <laughs> Krakoa? I, I don't see a Hellfire Gala anywhere around. Can I go to that again? This doesn't make you, because again, Jeffrey Thorne, Stephanie Phillips, Lansing, and Kelly, they're not names that you would get excited about and say, oh my God, because you need these names to have it like, I think they're cool. Maybe I'll check out these other books. Everything ends up being less and less. And it just, it, it's dead on the vine already. And that's not what you need. And Tom Brevoort better be real concerned about this. But as we see with them and the Spidey office, all the places at Marvel, they just think that it's a few people who are upset about it. A few people who might not like it. They're going to find out because this lineup, these books are so much less in my mind than most of the stuff we got in Krakoa. And obviously that, you know, ended to get to that. It's just, it, it's mind boggling that this is what they came up with. Couldn't agree more. I do want to say, if you like Jim and I talking, Jim and I have an awesome podcast on Patreon. There's a link in the video description where Jim and I talk about all the new releases from Marvel, DC, any books. We'll be talking about NYX. We'll be hitting Phoenix. We'll be hitting X-Force, all that crap, you know, during our weekly Hot or Not podcast, Jim. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I'm ready. I'm like, I have the knot and the hot and knot button. I have my hand as these go. They're, it's already ready on the knot. But we give everything its chance. We like to talk about stuff and have fun.